hello everyone so welcome to my youtube channel simulation by hm so in today's video we are going to develop a cyclic voltammetry also known as constant voltage cycling in comsol so let's jump right right into it so we'll start with model wizard here you, when you open comsol that's the window that you get you should be familiar with that so let's go to this one now we want to develop something like axis symmetry just like we have for like you know, usual batteries and superquesters i will be doing for superquesters you can do it for battery as well because battery uh, why superquester because with batteries you need a lot more uh, settings to develop a proper cv curves so with superquester you it's a lot easier so let's go with something simpler because the purpose here is to develop how to apply the cv curve like that's the main aim here so we'll go with secondary current distribution double click that one and these two let's keep it as it is and then go to studies and we want this to be time dependent double click this one and that should yeah so well let's start with very simple geometric like add just three rectangles uh, and let's keep the units to millimeter yep and let's keep the width of your first electrode 2 and the height of the whole thing as 10 millimeters build select you can duplicate this one and then this is now the electrolyte part and let's keep it one millimeter and we want this to be around this location so this is your electrode first electrode like your electrolyte and then we need another electrode so you can duplicate this one again should be three and let's keep the thickness to two yep. So that is your, let's say, a very simple electrode and electrolyte uh, domain. So the, these two are your electrode and the central one is electrolyte. And as for materials, we need to, let's go with very common or basic materials for superquesters, for example, for symmetric superquesters to be more precise. Most of the time your electrodes are simply graphite, so let's keep it. ACDC simple graphite double click this one and we only want these two to be the graphites for the central one it should be electrolyte so for that maybe we can choose a bit from battery electrolytes and let's keep it like LIPF6 LIF sorry PF6 lithium hexa fluorophosphate double click that one and then we can choose this one so this uh, you almost sets your properties at the moment this is x like this this shows that there is a problem here because uh, while let me just clarify this one so at the moment it all of the three are selected right so if you go to select uh, this electrolyte all three of them are selected as electrolytes why because we haven't added the power electrode yet so let's add that one and you can choose these two and you will see that now the electrolyte is only the central portion because the other two domains are overridden by this force uh, electrode and in addition to, to that we also need um, like like where from where we will apply the potential and where the ground exists so for that you can go with electrode apply electric potential because this is cyclic voltammetry basically we are dealing with potential so we want let's supply the potential from this side this is like to mimic something realistic like in batteries and superpasses you have current or voltage applied from the top or from bottom right so that's that and we also need the ground since in the circuit you need an input and an out, uh, a ground like the zero voltage or negative terminal so we'll apply this ground here so this your current will or your potential will be applied at this point and this is your zero volt so that sort of completes the whole circuit and as you can see this is still close right so if you go here it is saying give me electrolyte conductivity so since electrolyte is this one and it is only chosen for this domain and these two are porous domains right so we also need electrolyte properties here and the one property that is it is asking is electrolyte conductivity for the timing let's just say maybe very simple or two and now for for your case you will have to choose a specific value for whichever material or whichever electrolyte you are going to use and after that go to the electrolyte and this concentrate this is basically your initial concentration of your electrolyte uh, most of the simulations or most of the research papers that you will read they will specify this one to be 1000 for supercapacitor for batteries uh, it varies 
based on how you apply your uh, equilibrium potential so 1000 and also when you go here you also need to keep this to 1000 so the more per meter cube other than that if you see here this is electrolyte volume fraction of the electron right so this is basically your porosity so electrolyte part meaning that 0 0.67 this is very uh, typical value for carbon or graphite and electrode volume fraction uh, that is 0 0.33 that is like that is the most typical value for uh, carbon electrodes in supercrystals most of the time and when you like use this one you see these equations right now also you need to enable these equations by going from here show more options and click this one in case if you can't see these equations because i will show you like why i'm doing that like why we have these and these are also very useful so to click this one and press ok and we have porous electro reactions now this is for batteries uh, batteries you need to like specify a lot of conditions so i am going to disable this one and instead i'm going to add this porous matrix double layer capacitor and these two are the values that you usually put but in this case i'm going to i'm not going to uh, change the, these two and uh, so everything is set up just one last thing is how we apply this volume this is like the key or heart of this whole video how we apply cyclic voltammetry or cyclic how we perform that so let's set up few parameters like uh, what would what will be the maximum or the minimum voltage let's name it v max and let's set this one maybe 3 or maybe 2.7 and we can set this sorry uh, 2.7 yeah. this one and we also need to specify minimum voltage so yeah and let's keep that to be directly zero and since uh, in cyclic voltammetry we deal with scan rate so let's uh, refer that as by small v and let's say the scan rate is 10 volts per second that should do uh, yeah and now uh, define another parameter name it as th t means time period h means half time time cycle and uh, how you define this one this should be your v max minus v min minimum and then divided by your v so this is your half time cycle 0.27 based on what is your voltage and what is your scan rate right so you can play around with these parameters on your own and i will show you why this one like this is very important uh, helpful when we apply so here define another another function the interpolation now this is like the main thing here so name it as v in this is your input voltage that's how you apply the whole changing voltage like constant voltage and then start from zero time and here it should be at the start it should be v minimum your voltage would be v, v, v minimum v minimum and then we go th so at your half cycle your voltage would be maximum and then th multiply by 2 that is your like almost your full cycle and v minimum and similarly let's say we want to apply two cycles so t h um, should be 3 let's name it v max and then um, so this is your two cycles complete and just to confirm this one you can also plot this one so this is your cycling you can apply as many as uh, you want and uh, other than that we also need to specify what is the unit of v in uh, that should be volt and argument is your second time basically and now this unit this one is what we are going to use in electric here electric pressure so we need to apply v in and then its argument would be time so it is a function of time so with time you you are basically applying uh, this uh, triangular voltage cycling this is this is what cyclic voltammetry is right you also know like this is the specific scan rate that you have so that that's how you sort of convert this scan rate into cycling thing uh, using interpolation function in console and now for the meshing i'm keeping it as it is normal and in the time step 
I want you to specify th and divide it by 10. This is sort of time intervals. You can think of think this uh, in that sense. And then what should be your ending time? That depends on how many cycles you are applying. So this here is basically your end time, right? So simply just copy this one. And in the time step, that should be one. Yeah, here. So that pretty much sums the whole simulation all the parameters let me check again so yeah initial voltage is zero axis metric so this is around this uh, axis or uh, this whole domain will rotate sort of gives you a cylindrical uh, super capacitor like this thing okay yeah that's pretty much it and then you can just simply compute this one or go from study and compute and it's like it's, it's a quick simulation doesn't take much time that's it now in order to see how your voltage is applied let's take a point here so take 1d group plot and point graph let's check here and instead of phil let's draw phis as means solid so i want to check the potential in the solid and you see this is how we applied at the start uh, but uh, i want to check cv curve which is like pretty typical of uh, when we analyze any electrochemical system using uh, cyclic voltammetry so in the expression part so yeah now for so go in this here this equation view and check these parameters so this is a current right in total current so copy this one so that's why it's important when you enable these equations from here equation view you can also check what are the uh, variables or expressions at the background that are going on so you can uh, using this uh, feature you can extract useful variables so i'm going to extract this cdi total and i'm going to express it here yeah so this is your uh, cv card right and that's like pretty typical of super capacitors so yeah that's the whole simulation thank you so much for watching if you have any question you can uh, post it in the comment and also i'm going to post a reference to one of my papers and i i would highly appreciate that one if you just maybe cite it in your papers in the form of like you can easily just put it in whichever sense you like that is actually quite advanced simulation that i did multi-scaling thing but that's like uh, quite relevant to electrochemical systems specifically to superclusters thank you so much for watching see you